Welcome to my thoughts on Scream Queens Season 1 Episode 3. This episode is called Chainsaw. And I'm just really quickly gonna... Oh, right. Absolutely love this episode. Spoilers for every episode leading up to and including this one. I'm just gonna say the, the obvious thing. The fact that the the Grace's father, I keep forgetting, Wes. The fact that Wes calls the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre not like the best Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, which, you know, that's what I hear. I haven't watched those, but I don't I don't have anything I against the idea. I'm just still looking for a good deal on the first one. But yeah. No, he says it's the best movie ever made, in his opinion, you know. And throughout the episode, chainsaws, you know, most of the time it's Red Devil attacking with a chainsaw. Zayday has a chainsaw, you know, so, yeah. And, you know, he's never... Oh, hold on, actually, yeah, yeah, but the, yeah. We know that there are at least two now, so... Him coming in and saving Gigi there at the end of this episode could be staged to make him look like he isn't part of it. So, yeah. Anyway, bad. So, hey. Diving in headfirst to the chronological notes. So, the, the, with the, um, Ah, uh, convenience store, I think they're called. Uh, with the convenience store, we have the... Hold on. There, that's better. With the convenience store, we have the, the very scream thing of someone being mistaken for the killer. You know, because they're wearing the, the suit that just... Yeah. Right, and yeah, it's explained later in the episode because I think his name was Aaron. He says that as Coney, he can do whatever he wants. He can steal money in public. So that's what Eugene was doing. He is the actual Red Devil mascot. He's the, he's the kid in the suit as the mascot, and he was trying to steal. He wasn't trying to attack, and, and yeah, you know, when you... You know, knowing that, watching it again, I mean, all he does is run. It looks threatening, and it's it comes also threatening to us, because there's creepy music things, but he didn't actually do anything, you know, so just, uh, I'll pay, I'll pay. You know, he doesn't even uh, seem to understand that they think he was going to attack them. He thinks that they're just, like, you know, vigilantes fighting, you know, ah, what, what do they call, like... Uh, shoplifting, you know. And we learn that there is no food in Kappa House, and, you know, which makes sense because the maid got her face burned off, and apparently the Chanel's have been eating cotton balls because it means they don't feel hungry, which, that's so wrong in so many ways. Like, holy crap, just, yeah. It's like illegal in seven different ways. And let's see. I, I love that, you know, I think it's Grace who, who grabs a snack. And with the, you know, now with the, the hole there, we see the, the face of Red Devil, you know. And again, to the audience, it's like, oh, attack, but... I mean, we've been told the Red Devil is the mascot, so, yeah, he, he thought he could get away with shoplifting. And, let's see. Yeah, um, Abigail Breslin talks to Chanel number one about the, the, like, apparently she, you know, she had a threesome, and they, they make sure, let's see, I think they used, like, three different two or three different, you know, slang terms, including Eiffel Towered, which hadn't heard that one before. That's, that's yeah. And, yeah, the um, the security guard 
discovers the, you know, Ariande Grande's, yeah, I think I got it right, her, her blood, uh, you know, and it's like, why do you have the blood detecting liquid? Oh, you know, I hate horseradish, but I love Arby's. So she separates to check and, and sprays on to check if there's no, which, I mean, that's not the least wild thing I've ever heard, but it still does kind of, like, she could be one of the two killers, you know, easily, and certainly the fact that she's, you know, proving that there have been killings, you know, that's keeping, you know, yeah, that, that could be useful. And... And people are walking around with, you know, no, I'm I'm not Kappa Kappa Tau signs because they don't personally want to get killed. Like, they're not like, Red Devil, you shouldn't be killing people, which would still be ridiculous, but at least show some empathy. No, 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 they're just like, please don't kill me. I'm just trying to live the, the sweet college life here. And, let's see, yeah, and, and, Chad Rad is sad about the, you know, and, and he specifically, he makes sure to include that part of the reason he's sad is it's not just, you know, Boone, his best friend, is dead. He used to compliment me all the time, you know, just, and, and <laughs> Chanel, number one, says, you know, she wants to get back together, but you have to stop having sex with so many people, and he just flips he has a full-on conniption fit and he's like okay i know that you're not like a psych major so you're probably not going to understand this is going to go over your head but what you're saying is literally pathological okay this is this is so super controlled it just <laughs> oh god and yeah and then he says that he won't have sex with her because he'd look at the back of her head and he'd imagine the back of the head of one of her pledges. So he's breaking up with her again. <clears throat> and we learn that Sam has spied on Billy Lord watching her when she was changing clothes. Now, if I were to try to defend the the... You know, not, not the actual act. That's, you know, awful. Don't do that. But the writing... The, the 80s had a number of raunchy comedies where, among other things, men would watch women change clothes and, and you know, shower and that kind of thing. You know, t teenage boys in school would do that to teenage girls in, in high school. And... I feel like this is just trying to even it out by saying, you know, women can spy on naked women as well, but it's, yeah, just, this show is very, very offensive, and I am definitely going to hell for laughing so much at it. And, yeah, so the Dean claims that there's no serial killer, you know, <clears throat> Boone slit his own throat, and then as Chad later points out, got up, went to the bathroom, then walked back, you know, and just, and, and yeah, you know, the, I, I don't know about, I'm not sure there's a lot when it comes to, like, actual murder, but there are a lot of sexual assault and rapes that have happened on college campuses, and were covered up by not just students, but administrators, because they're more worried about their university getting a bad reputation than protecting their students. Let's see. And, you know, filtered through a satirical look at slashers, it's a serial killer that's being covered up. You know, we, yes, we knew that Dean Munch had covered up the, uh, what's it called? She had covered up the 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 birth and yeah the the whole life cycle birth death you know birth of a baby death of the mother in the the flashback in the first episode we found out in episode two I th think it was that she had helped cover that up 
But that may not have been like a killing. That might have been a natural death. Like, you know, a, a woman needs people to help her, needs, needs some medical attention during and after giving birth. You know, there are people who die from giving birth is if absolutely nothing is done to, to help them. Now, you know, but maybe it was a killing, so just, yeah. And I love the, you know, so they're, the, yeah, uh, Zayde and Grace are going to Bel Air, and Denise is like, oh no, don't even ask me. Sure, you girls go off to Bel Air, and I'll just stay here. Just, and, you know, they, they get there and they talk to, I, I really appreciate the, the, I did not recognize the father, but certainly the, the actress playing the mother of the, the, oh, oh there, there it is, um, playing the mother of the Ariana Grande character, I realize I'm not using their real numbers, I, I struggle to, numbers, I have an easier time with names, and even that I sometimes struggle recalling, but I cannot remember their numbers. But yeah, the the mother, just to make sure, yeah, that was actually Charisma Carpenter, who herself was a, uh, what's the word, like, um, in like the 90s. She was a, you know, young actress who was, you know, being cast for, for being conventionally attractive. Roger Bart plays the the father dr herfman is he oh wow he's been in 70 he has 74 acting credits i'm just gonna skim real real quick to see if i mean it would basic it would probably have to be something back in, okay he's as far back as 94 he was in stuff he was the singing voice for young hercules and disney's hercules cool and yeah, yeah, he's done a couple of other Disney. I see, and not offhand, not not really seeing anything where he's like specifically. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's see. Then the. But but yeah, you know, and they yeah the the they revealed the the letter. I really, really loved, I think the actor's name is Glenn Powell, playing, yes, Chad Rad. Breaking the fourth wall and looking directly into the camera while saying stuff like, you know, I, I really love having sex with you, I like the faces you make, and this and it's like the parents have read this, you know, just, yeah. And and they're like, you know, it's it's very important to us that our daughter never returned here. And and I think Sadie was like, wow. That's yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and and Wes is you know, he's he, in reality he's a he's a literature professor, but now he's pretending to be a, a movie professor so that you know and and I love you know so he can keep an eye on Grace because he you know maybe he's that overprotective or maybe you know it has to do with the kill like it's creepy it's it's very very creepy you know and and I love you know he he walks in and she's like you know so she raises her hand and he's like ah oh, a very enthusiastic student great what is your question student it just <laughs> and she immediately calls him dad and everyone turns to look at him and he's like okay wow just <laughs> there's some chance he didn't think this this would happen he's like i i thought i'd be able to scam my way into being your teacher so i could keep an eye on you as i want to do and you weren't going to tell everyone that i'm actually your father you know just yeah and let's see. I I love the we we you know 
Right, right. There's the yeah. I uh, I I. What's her name? Is the um. Uh, the 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 girl who's always who's you know got the the thing with the candles. Okay, I'll I'll see if maybe she'll be in the. Uh, there, there it is. Yeah, um, Jennifer. That's right. Breezy Eslin. You know, she's like, is it okay if I light this in here? And I'm just like. Are you gonna eat it like you did with the last candle you lit? Cause if so, no. Uh, you know, if it's just for ambiance, I c I can live with that. But I really don't want to watch you eat more candles. And you know the the yeah. So so Wes is like, what is the best movie ever made? And Jennifer says, sixteen candles. And it's like because she likes the can. <laughs> It's a thing with her candles. And Sam is like, blue is the warmest color? You know, which makes sense that she, and and it also fits the whole creepy thing because, like, I haven't watched it, but I hear that that movie has some very, like, overt lesbian sex scenes. So, you know, it's like she likes what It's just... Because, like, there's other lesbian movies, you know? It's it's not like she had to go with that specific one, you know? So, so just, yeah. Let's see. And, yeah, you know, he explains that the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is his favorite movie and, and puts it on, and he's sitting there, like, really into it, and one of the students pukes in a bag was that even her own i th did she take someone else's anyway even even without it's possible that that was actually her own uh, but yeah that's that's really gross but also like again i hear that movie is extremely like it's not super gory but the implicate because of the implication is very very strong you know and I, you know, and and he he says that the last few frames there's like Vietnam and just yeah, just various like really traumatic, and and Gigi walks up. Wow, what you said was amazing. What did it mean? I really love just like. That was amazing. What did it mean? But yeah, the the then you have, you know, he he says the the you know we're all either chasing people with chainsaws or fleeing from chainsaws of past trauma, which is an interesting thing for him to say. You know what exactly is the thing? and and she asks which one are you? You know, are you one who, you know. Is, is is upset by past trauma, or are you someone who goes out and does something bad because of past trauma? And he doesn't answer. He just says, I'm, I'm a father who really cares about his daughter, which, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and, we meet Coney. Uh, the, uh, the person inside Coney. Uh, oh, wow. The the person inside the Coney suit. But yeah, you know, we, we met him before. I also love, you know, he, he does the dancing and nobody is, like, super into it. And, and Dean is like, can I get a yay, Coney? And, you know, nobody is like, because she's just been talking about serial, you know, just. And, and she walks past and says to Coney something like, you're despicable or you're, you're a disgrace, something like that, you know, and just. And then we, you know, Coney, and we get the POV shot, and we hear the heavy breathing, because these, you know, this was made by people who love the Halloween movies, 
and then it cuts to the you know and and yeah it cuts to to the other side as we see and and we get the voiceover you know i really like that each time it's a different character i hope they keep that up but i you know i could forgive them if they can't keep that you know there's 23 episodes uh, you know until season 3 comes out so i can understand if they can't but yeah so far there's you know episode 1 was Chanel number 1 episode 2 was Dean and this episode it was Aaron, who is inside the, you know, and he's, like, sexually assaulting girls and getting away with it. He's stealing money and getting away with it. And just, yeah, you know, and and he even says, you know, I can get away with anything, as which, yeah, I, I don't know if that's true of mascots. I, I don't know enough to say that, that maybe it is true. But that definitely, there are a lot of college students who are able to get away with really horrible stuff because they're related to someone famous. They donated a lot of money to the college, that kind of thing. And within like two minutes of his voiceover even starting, he gets attacked by a chainsaw. Like, I love, because it, it's basically acting like, oh, he's the new supporting character. You know, he's going to be in multiple episodes, because the first two episodes, the person, you know, doing voiceover was a really important person, and here is just, you know, and, and yeah, you know, yes, it's, it's too bad that the, the blood is clearly, like, CG, but, you know, it was still, I, I still quite appreciated, and, yeah, we get the, the, the reveal that yes, she did, you know, Dean Munch did rip the the suit off from like an ice cream place, you know, and and justify it with, oh yeah, you know, one of the the people who made the college made soft, you know, created the first soft serve ice cream, so now it's it's just yeah, and I do also I I love and want to marry the line. I realize now that the Red Devil can no longer represent us. Like that's such a such a wonderful line, beautifully delivered by Jamie Lee Curtis. But just that's 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 amazing. And Hes uh, Hester, yes, Hester, you know, and Chanel number one, the the. You know, yeah, Chanel number one catches her inside her closet vag, her second vagina, and they talk about the, the clothes, and I love it. just such great needle drops. Um, I think it's called Quesara Sara, you know, as Hester is dreaming about being, you know, like Chanel, which again, super creepy. Like, I mean, if you're attracted to someone else's wardrobe, ask you know don't go into their wardrobe and start trying on their clothes especially when you know that they don't particularly like you you know that's very very creepy and that's it it has the vibe of like you know because like one of the reasons people might be trying to kill chanel number one is to replace her and that yeah one element of replacing it's like she's playing at replacing her before grabbing the chainsaw but yeah, you know, and you have the the thing of the 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 second reference to the the that movie with I feel like at this point I should have the the title. Let's see. I know that it has this person he's one of the stars of it. So if I real quick is it she's all that Yes, you know, we get the second reference to She's All That, the Freddie Prince Jr., Rachel Le Lee Cook movie, and yeah, you know, Chanel number one is going to turn Hester into another Chanel so that the, you know, there'll be one less disaster pledge. And Dean manages to find the bright side of a serial killer, which is you know, a thing that she does, and, you know, they're going to move in to the, the, what's it called, the, um, sorority house, which, 
<laughs> just such a such a ridiculous like on its face a dean moving into a sorority house like just it's it's the kind of thing that would happen in like an 80s or 90s you know teen oriented movie it's it sounds like so just yeah and <laughs> dean calls dibs on wes and you know that would certainly explain why she you know that would be her motivation for attacking Gigi at the end of the episode. Let's see, and <laughs> we learn that Billy Lord is literally an actual biological member of the Manson family, which is just like beautifully, unbelievably just. Like, there's so many things about that that... Holy crap. But, yeah. Because, um, you know, like she says, if she's related to a serial killer... You know, in, in slasher movies, if you're related to a serial killer, you're probably going to turn out to be one. And, I mean... As... as no, seriously. I know it's going to sound absurd, but if you don't already know... There were a lot of people fascinated. You know, he's he's dead now, thankfully. Uh, but the yeah, the the um the actual Charles Manson was actually considered like appealing by an, a number of of people. The the people he didn't kill, and who didn't have empathy for the people he killed, you know, so, so, like, that element of it is actually, like, <laughs> yeah, and now that Sam knows that, they can be alibi buddies, alibibities, alibuddies, and, yeah, just, <laughs> And, and, you know, the, the protestation and, you know, Sam understandably asks, are, are you lesbian? Because, like, you know, you know, you know I am, and you're walking up saying, let's, you know, they're, we're so alike, you and I, kind of, you know, so, so obviously it sounds like she's trying to come out to her, but no, it's, you know, it's a different secret and, yeah, just the, yeah, and Hester is now Chanel number six, and Abigail Breslin is furious, and, and early in this episode, she said that she didn't want to participate anymore, you know, so, yeah, and, and, again, I think it's Zayday who points out, you know, Abigail has a point. Like, you really don't respect the rules of this place. And, let's see, then you have the, um, what does that refer to? Um, hmm. Oh, right, right, yes. Multiple of the... the I, I guess every Chanel has had sex with Chad. Uh, you know, Billy Lord, Abigail Breslin, and uh, Ariana Grande, and, you know, obviously Chanel number one as well. So, yeah, and that, again, makes you think, you know, maybe... Maybe Chanel found out about Grande and killed her to eliminate the competition... You know, maybe it was one of the other girls killing Grande to take care of the competition and frame Chanel number one. You know, it's because because that's a major element of slasher movies is you know there's there's a lot of them where it's like framing someone else as the, as the killer for, for the ones where we don't know what the killer who the killer is. And I love that. So so Chad has like a meeting of the Dicky Dollar Golf Buddies, and you know he's he's hammering to to get 
th their attention, and it's it's like a little wooden golf. Uh, I don't the head of a golf club. You know, I think you know what I mean. And they're they're gonna get drunk and get bats and run around yelling, "I challenge you, Red Devil." <laughs> And they actually think that's gonna work, and it actually sort of does. Like I, I could barely believe when I, you know, I was like, no, that's too ridiculous. Even for as like, you know, as ridiculous as the show has gotten so far, there's no way that the Red Devil is actually just gonna run out and start attacking people who shout his name into the street. Just yeah, I mean, yes, I realize they're still close to the campus. It's still, but, like, just, it's it's so ridiculous, and I love it. And, let's see. Yeah, the, the <laughs> Grace and Pete, you know, reconcile, and she says, there's something about Chad Radwell, and he's like, you're not dating him, are you? <laughs> Which is, at this point, a fairly reasonable question you know it is like i mean who apparently everyone is you know the every every chanel animals at the zoo plants probably boon you know just everyone but but yeah the, and and the you know okay so i'm sorry that i you know i thought that you were the the killer and then when he says well while you were avoiding me because you thought I was the killer, and she's like, oh my god, move on. <laughs> it's been like a day. It's it's a, it's a thing to move on from. Like, eventually he'll get there, but one day might not be enough. That's, that's just not, yeah. And they play the, the Backstreet, Backstreet Boys song, which I'm a little bit ashamed that I recognized immediately as Backstreet's back. And, like, at first I was like, okay, even for, like, I, I get that you're doing, like, 90s songs, needle drops, but, like, where's this? And then the camera reveals they're all decked out in the golf gear, and, you know, they look like Backstreet Boys. Like, they're all in white and walking, you know, they're... they're um, they're next to each other and walking up dramatically. Like they, they do legitimately look like Backstreet Boys. And if I recall, the song actually plays for like a minute or two before, and and then the the tense music starts. And they attack a fire hydrant because it's red. You know that means that it's red. Like so, yeah, that is almost definitely like commenting on like white fraternity racism so they're like you know they're attacking everything of a certain color because they consider you know they think that they're all the same and it's it's pushed into this ridiculous thing like i feel like it's you know yeah just the the this is you know this is this is a good way to fight that kind of racism because they look ridiculous, you know, they look as absurd as, like, if it wasn't, in real life, it's obviously tragic, if it wasn't, we could see how absurd it is, like, you think that everyone who has the same skin color is basically the same, like, it's absurd, it's completely absurd way of, of looking at the world, but that is how these people think, so, yeah, if they were up against people whose skin was, was red, They'd be attacking fire hydrants. Just yeah. Which actually, I guess we dodged a bullet with them not deciding to have it like be a Native American character. And they they beat up a red car. That's probably his car. <laughs> that's that's legitimately like I. Oh my god. And then the Red Devil does show up. <laughs> it's like, what is even... Like, if an alien had beamed down onto the street, I th I think it would have been as ridiculous. But but yeah, you know, slasher movie rules. Yes, it, 100%. And, and there's two of them. And they've both got chainsaws. And the, the guys split up. 
and they try to swing the bat and then of course it gets cut in half by the chainsaw and they look surprised and you know you've got the one guy who loses both arms the same way because it worked so well the first time you know and he's standing there <clears throat> it's only a flesh wound and just yeah and the fact that Chad did not get killed might suggest that whoever it is you know maybe at least one of the killers does want Chad which you know hypothetically if it is Chanel number one you know, so, so yeah, let's see, it wouldn't be Dean, because she isn't actually interested in him, it was just for blackmail, let's see, and yeah, we learn, oh, right, yeah, yeah, the, the um, and Denise thinks that Zayde is the killer, and it's like, you know, you, let's see, there was the, yeah, you know, she might be trying to kill, Chanel number one to take the presidency, which again, like, I mean, in real life, sometimes people will kill a person to, to yeah, for example, take a president, but it's like the president of a country. It's not the president of a sorority. It just, it reminds me of the, 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 um, ah, what's it called? The M Machete Kills with, uh, you know, he promised me the crown. And Zayde bought a CD near where, you know, her, her friend was, where Denise's friend was killed. And, you know, she's like, um, I was demonstrably, like, there are witnesses who can place me inside Kappa Kappa Tau when your friend was murdered. But you might be working with a partner, and and she apparently like she tweeted, you know the the thing with like if you if you want to get away with murder, it's good to use a partner. She tweeted that at some like how to get away with murder, <laughs> which just yeah am amazing, absolutely amazing, and just yeah that was and and right and and then is that and you have a chainsaw that, you know, under your bed. And Zayde tells her, you know, that chainsaw was sent by my grandmother after you took our tasers away, which again is just like... I mean, okay, so you've got, like, it's obviously, it's ridiculous. It's chainsaw for self-defense. Like, taser, sure. But chainsaw for self-defense, but then on the other hand, like, if you're taking seriously, no, there's a serial killer out there. Okay, I mean, you know, try not to kill them, try to just injure them so they can be arrested, but, yeah, I mean, that there's a certain amount of sense there, and it's like, overprotective grandparents, so they're, like, hugely overcompensating. And the the thing with, ah, oh, you, you're so right about salad, it's not quite a date. The reason it's not a date is because there's three of us, and you know, it cuts, and Dean Munch is sitting there, and and Gigi is like, "No, I'm actually happy you tagged along," and she starts laughing at the at the fart noise made by the Thousand Island dressing, and then it cuts, and then when it cuts back, she's still laughing, and it's like, oh. You know, she's got like a glass. She's she's like spilling the the um, ah. I'm not a drinks person. I'm guessing like Chardonnay, maybe. And I'm thinking you may want to ease off on a on a Chardonnay just a tiny little bit. This you may already have a little bit of a buzz going to be laughing that much at that. You know, and the others are just like. Well, if we sit here waiting, eventually she'll stop giggling, you know, just she's having a giggle fit. And and we see that Zayde is practicing grabbing the chainsaw from under the bed, and it's just it's amazing. It's just such a Yeah. I uh yeah. And the yeah, we, you know, the, the, 
Wes having GPS, uh, you know, and and not being able to find Grace, and then you know calls her, and she lies about the location and about how many people are around. And Dean wearing the the nightgown, and she says, "Well, you know, a nightgown is the only time that it's appropriate to dress as a 19th century homesteader, and it's my favorite kind of dress, which is just so wrong." And <laughs> the white noise machine. I'm just because it's a thing, you know. Some people like to listen to white noise to fall asleep, and it'll be like soothing whale noises, but she likes to sleep with whale distress noises, which she finds very soothing. And there's no, you know, volume setting on this thing, which, like, you know, if you're in real life and you want to, you need to listen to that, like, just put it further away from the, like, you know, go to a different room, place it, and then go back, you know, if you if you don't need it to be that loud, because she doesn't say she needs it that loud, she just says there's no volume setting on it, you know, and, okay, we don't have to use whale, you know, and they're have to, having to yell to, to hear each other, we don't have to use whale distress noises, here's baboon attack, which is also just, like, nobody likes to, that's, that's a, that's a very, very upsetting noise, you know, like, just, yeah, and then, you know what, we'll, we'll, yeah, and here's sudden cabin depressurization, which comes with, like, people screaming for help, just in case it wasn't already off-putting and disturbing enough to listen to, and she's like, you know what, let's compromise, we'll set it to slasher film, and, you know, afterwards, she's like, yeah, of course I heard screaming, my white noise machine is set to slasher, and the, the, yeah, Gigi, of course, goes to sleep on the couch, which makes a lot of sense, considering, and Chainsaw Attack, and Wes stops it, and Wes thinks that Dean is the, the killer, which, you know, makes a lot of sense, like, she makes sure that Gigi gets you know, out of there, she's gone until the, the, you know, she, let's see, she returns after the killer has already escaped, and, yeah, it, you know, like, the killer wasn't, I'm not sure the, the killer was really trying to hurt Wes, which could mean that, you know, it's someone who's interested in, in Wes, which we know she is, so just, yeah, um, really, really loved the episode. I just realized I did not yet read, so I'll just real quick skim the article that talks about each episode. So let's see. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, he comes at Grace and she uses a taser on him right in the balls. Suffice to say, the murders are taking their toll on everyone. And... Let's see... <laughs> Chanel number 5 says goodbye to the original Chanel in spectacularly bitchy fashion. And... Let's see... Um... Yeah, that her mother supposedly connected with Manson while in jail and got pregnant. Is it nonsense or what? I'd love to think it's not, because that would be amazing, but I don't know. I guess that would be too far. Like, did he... I don't think he got, like, conjugal visits. I don't think they would have been okay with that, considering, you know, the, the deaths and all. Now, let's see. And... Yeah, the, the, um, yeah, the guy likes, the, the guy who wrote the article really likes the, the horseradish spray thing, and, let's see, <clears throat> and he points out Glenn Powell plays Chad excellently, Powell is almost near perfect, and, 
Yeah, and and Jamie Lee Curtis is both sinister at times, flat out hilarious at others. And let's see. Then we have the yeah. He points out the 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 excellent score and. Yeah, yeah, the, the hilarious, satirical film professor bullshit, as Texas Chainsaw Massacre is his firm. Yeah, he gives a silly little mini lecture about the final frames. Vietnam, Watergate, the invention of the pill, the White Album. What? That's... There's... Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. That's, um, yeah. And... Yeah, you know, he points out, you know, the scene takes on film professors who try to take certain films, elevate them to high art, when really they're not even intended as such. You know, Toby Hooper did not make the Texas Chainsaw Massacre to comment on, you know, to make some masterpiece. You know, he wanted to make something that would really get to people that would push boundaries and, like, take horror. You know, it, it was, um, like, around that time, you know, the the... Like, today, horror can be very gory. That was a, a time where, you know, I guess, was it the 80s that really introduced gore? Other than, of course, the the original Night of the Living Dead was has, has some great gore. Now, let's see. And, yeah, Wes Gardner comes off a little creepy, a bit dangerous here. Will this lead to anything more? Simply another red, pardon that pun, herring, time will tell. And let's see. And yeah, the the he says his favorite part of the episode is the mascot Coney. There's a real great montage. Uh, Wham's "I'm Your Man." Let's see. And, yeah, coincidence the chainsaw was used after Professor Gardner's class? Hmm. Because that is the first use of the chainsaw, you know. So, so just, yeah. Let's see. And we know that Wes does not like, you know, this, this whole college thing. He finds some of this stuff creepy. And, like, word has maybe gotten around that Coney is going around grabbing women, stealing money. And he's like, oh, no, you don't. Grabs the chainsaw and says, yeah. And I really appreciate the detail that the chainsaw that Zayday has under her bed is clearly the same type of chainsaw, the same model as the ones being used to kill people. So, like, maybe someone has been taking it to use to, to you know, or maybe someone knew that and and putting it back after or maybe someone knew that she had that one and decided to frame her by just you know is it possible that the grandmother if she just sent it in the mail it could have been like sent by whoever the real killers are to frame Zayde yeah now let's see Yeah, this this guy also makes the Monty Python Holy Grail reference, and right, and he points out Wes, you know, saying to Dean Munch, "You're the killer," might be overcompensating. I have an itching suspicion Wes is not who he appears, though that can be said for a lot of these characters. Yeah, just so. Yeah, really, really loving this show so far. Um, I think that is everything that I had to say. So just, yeah, I right. I think they're doing a really good job of gradually like making it more. Um, I mean, let's see. The first episode introduced, like, ma you know, painting a tapestry, making it more complicated. You know, every episode features some, like, trying to uncover mystery. In the first episode, 
we we learn that you know there is clearly a red devil going around killing people and we wonder who it is second episode we see that Boone was staged which I guess actually yeah probably one of the killers is Boone that that would make a lot of sense or I guess unless there's more than two but yeah you know that is that is the thing that you know the the second episode introduces the fact that Boone is at least part of it and then this episode introduces that there are two killers if not even more and just yeah really really great and and right I got I I didn't write it down but I'm 90% sure that the picture that like Ariana Grande has supposedly been was it Instagramming I think it was or was it tweeting and it's something you know social media ing I'm almost certain that that's actually like post-mortem that someone you know because we know that her body is being transported we you know it, it was suddenly miss y yes yes they let's see it was one of the ones where they put it in the freezer box and then it was missing later and Abigail Breslin knows this because she got kind of bored she wanted to look at a body uh, you know and, and she discovered that it was missing and and yeah like someone has been like carrying around you know plops her down on a, a pool you know yeah near a pool and and you know somewhat posing her and and taking a picture you know because her body wasn't that messed up so and also I, I I don't know why no one pointed out like the the chair that she was sitting on looks a lot like it was one of the I don't know I mean maybe maybe pool chairs just look like that I haven't been around rich people pools I hope that's not crazy loud and annoying for you guys anyway the video is almost over so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up real quick certainly I can hear that noise anyway yes the the um, you have the um, uh, yeah I, I wondered if you know she had been posed at that particular pool but yeah it might just be you know a pool but the the um, yeah, because, you know, Zayde points out, are you sure she's not hiding and you haven't found her because she's, you know, the house is massive and they, you know, shoot that down immediately. But yeah, like maybe someone was waiting for them to not be at the pool, dragged her to the, the pool chair and just, yeah. But but yeah, um, really, really loving. I, I forget if I said last time, but so far it is more comedy than horror I'm I'm liking the the mix so far. Uh, you know, I I love out and out horror, but I don't need everything horror I watch. Like I, if it wasn't legitimately tense and scary at times, it wouldn't really scratch that itch for me. But it is. You know, when someone is attacked, like sometimes it's also funny, but it is usually like legitimately tense. You know, there is like I've seen scenes in slasher movies that weren't, you know, I, I probably referenced this too much, but sort of my go-to, Jason X, some of the time it's actually scary and creepy, like when, you know, the, the mask gets peeled off and it's like gnarly and squelchy and, you know, that's great. And, and the, the yeah, there's a couple of things, you know, the, the, the sleeping bag isn't bad, but a bunch of the kills in that movie are just not really tense. And I'm not just talking about the ones where the CG wasn't that good at the time, even, you know, I'm... So, so it is possible to do scenes like that and not, you know, make them actually scary or tense, and so far that has not been the case here. Like, as much as, like, it's, it's funny, it's very funny when Coney gets attacked, like, such a short amount of time into, like, because this is, uh, you know, this is, I'm almost certain it's a character we haven't met before, you know, and he dies within, just like, we don't even see his face. We only hear his voice. 
let's see, is there... Ah, uh, oh, here we go. Aaron Cohen. I just want to make sure he was not in the first two episodes, because I'm almost certain that he wasn't. And he even specifically says the only reason... Oh, he was on American Horror Story, which is also made by the um, Ryan Murphy, who created the show. Let's see, he... Yeah, he was not in the the first two episodes. So, so yeah, you know, he's introduced... He's, he even says, oh yeah, you know, the reason... Dean said the reason, the only reason that I'm the mascot is because I'm the right height. And I was the only student in college, in this entire college, uh, you know, that wasn't actually... You know, I'm I'm actually the the right height for it. You know, it just which you know normally makes him unpopular. People think he's too short for his age. But but yeah, um, absolutely love the show. Really looking forward to next episode next week. And I am definitely making at least one more video this week. Probably only one more video this week. But yeah. Hope to catch you then.